So gentlemen, what was the defining moment that said we must have a gravel group set on the market? Hmm. So Hiroshi and I started about five years ago researching the market. Uh, our first trip was to Colorado and that one, I think that was the gear range. It's when we realized we needed wider gear range than what we had. Um, and then I think it was a trip to Kansas the year later where we realized that the ergonomics Correct. probably needed to change. And then as we traveled around, tires became probably the third big piece, mm -hmm. tire clearance and the ability to run lots of different sized tires. Yeah, the situation is quite different from the pure road racing yeah. situation. How long was the group set in development? It sounds like four years, something yeah. like that. So we, we started the, our first trip was in um, 2014 and we visited Colorado and that was our first kind of trip through. But the most interesting part of that trip was the fact that people were stopping to buy road bikes and they were only buying cyclocross bikes and they were using them to use on the pavement, but they were also using them to go up into the mountains and on the dirt roads. Um, so that was our first kind of clue that something was changing. Mm -hmm. And then the second year we went to Kansas, we had to go to the heart, we had to go to the epicenter of gravel <laughs> and really saw how diverse it was. There it was, you know, people just wanting to get off the roads and they had so many miles of gravel, you know, these farm roads. And they realized that that was a great way to have a drop handlebar experience. And yeah. we saw that this, this was a fundamental change in how people were riding their bikes and that the parts that we were making were really good for road riding and road racing, but there were a lot of things we could do to change, to kind of better meet that riding experience of gravel yeah. riders. So in 2017, I was minding my own business at the Almanza 100, which is a very awesome race I must add, you should do it one day, and it happened to be very wet and very rainy. However- And very cold. And very cold. Very cold. <laughs> yeah. degrees yeah. And at the race was uh, Dave, Hiroshi, and a bunch of the other Shimano product development team. And I thought, hello, there's something very fishy going on here. And I tried to look at the components, but they were being very reclusive and unbeknown to me, they were testing, I think, uh, one of the early GRX derailers, something on Hiroshi's bike. Yep. Yeah. Hiroshi had the early RX derailleur with the clutch. Okay. Very sneaky. Very sneaky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, it was cold, wet, and muddy, and yeah. no Couldn't one really noticed. We, yeah. No one really cared. <laughs> Good to <laughs> I was quite peeved about that because I didn't get any spy photographs. Yeah. <laughs> and Hiroshi finished. There weren't many people finished that day. And you finished. I got top uh, 20, actually. Yeah. I went study five. Never happens, five. usually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just got you just got to wait them out. Yeah. 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 And while I'm here on the subject of RX, a few people have asked me why would you want to have a Shimano GRX group set over an Ultegra RX group set? Mm -hmm. Can you answer that for me? Sure. So Ultegra is our road racing group, mm. and so we kept we wanted to keep that separate. We realized that everyone who ro rides on the road loved the lever feel of our hydro, like our DI2 and our mechanical hydro. And we didn't wanna change that because that experience for them is very specific. And we knew that the gravel rider wanted something completely different. And so we knew we needed to change those ergonomics. So the other thing that we looked at is we didn't have a one by option and road racing, road riding, we didn't really see a need there for one, one by, uh, but absolutely on gravel. So once we started adding up all these pieces, it, it became a group. And we decided that you know, with new levers, new gear ratios, more tire clearance, it really kind of lent itself to a completely new group. And then once we started digging deeper, we're like, well, people aren't gonna just want DI2, they're gonna want mechanical, they're gonna want some lower price points. So yeah. we went into 10 a 10 speed. speed version. So it really, it kind of kept growing as Hiroshi uh, <laughs> kept building his, uh, portfolio and um, but then also road riding is changing people are looking for more versatility from a road bike mm -hmm. so we're going to continue to make the RX it's an Altegra RX derailleur mm -hmm. with the clutch mechanism mm -hmm. and you might see those on some endurance bikes sure. because people are looking for an endurance bike to 
you know, as a gravel light bike or whatever. So we'll keep making that and I hope you keep buying it. Um, <laughs> and like I said, but it's designed more around a road riding experience and it looks more road like, uh, which is important to a roadie. You know, yeah. they want to mm -hmm. they want to have a matching group. So that's an Ultegra RX derailleur. Makes perfect sense. And the new levers, by the way, for the GRX groups it are fantastic. Oh my God. Yeah. Tell me more about those ladies. Some have called them a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> Not us. <laughs> some, some genius. Mm. Mm. So, gentlemen, the gear ratios, you've obviously done your homework. You found that 4831 with a double was optimal for, for this John Ralph cycling paired to uh, like 1134 cassettes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just tell us a little bit about that, please. What, the, what thinking? Well, Hiroshi did a lot of math related to <laughs> tire sizes and gear ratios and realized that you know a one-to-one -one gear ratio with a much bigger tire yeah. wasn't the same as what you had before so hiroshi started looking at some different gear ratios and what um what would make sense so going below one-to-one -one, uh, especially as people got bigger tires you know 38s are kind of the standard now for most people mm -hmm. um but tell them about the math you did <laughs> <laughs> Matt, hiroshi turns out he's really smart. starting uh, about the 700 by 20C tires, then, but uh, the market is going to wider tire than around uh, 38. That uh, the diameter difference is uh, around uh, three or four percent. That's why, so we choose uh, the same gear feeling. Then, so my compact gear is used uh, 50 tires, but uh, we go down the four, uh, four percent, four percent of that of to the 48 tires. It's a map, our strategies and the story. So your, your top gear is actually about the same. If you run a, a road compact with mm. a 23 millimeter tire, your overall gear uh, development is about the same with a 38 mil tire using GRX's double. Yeah. One other note on the 4831 is the reason it's a 31 and not something else is because it helps the ramps and pins line up better. So it improves our front shifting, even though it is our, the whitest delta we've offered in a two by setup. Because we Shimano is so, uh, our strong point is shifting. So 4832, so we never reach the, our standard. Of course, some customers say that it works, but uh, no. It wasn't good enough for us. No. <laughs> yeah. So 4831 is better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen, for your time today. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank How you. was the ride? What'd you think? Oh, Rob was amazing. I mean, I didn't have to think about the shifting, okay, mm -hmm. or the bike. I just enjoyed the scenery, so that's a good thing for me. Okay. It's just a flawless experience. Good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love Shimano GRX. Aces. You should buy some too. <laughs> Thank you. Okay.